learning objectives after studying this module students will be able to state the meaning of accounting ratios learn the objectives and limitations of accounting ratios know the types of accounting ratios understand how to calculate the different types of ratios introduction to accounting ratios the comparative statements common size statements trend analysis accounting ratios and cash flow statements are considered as the common tools for the financial statement analysis of an organization here we learn accounting ratios that help us to know about the company's solvency efficiency and profitability meaning of accounting ratio a ratio is a mathematical number that helps to calculate the relationship of two or more numbers the ratio can be expressed in percentage fraction proportion and a number of times in accounts when we calculate a number by referring to accounting numbers which are taken from a financial statement are called as accounting ratios objectives of ratio analysis ratio analysis is the important for interpreting results given by financial statements it provides important financial information to the users and also tells areas that need investigations ratio analysis involves regrouping of data by applying arithmetic relationships it is complex process and requires fine understanding of the rules used for financial statements it provides comprehensive information to the analyst such as to know areas of the business that requires attention to know the areas that can be improved with the desired direction to provide a deep analysis of profitability efficiency and solvency of the business to compare the performance with the best industry standards to provide information for projections and estimates for the future advantages of ratio analysis ratio analysis improves the users efficiency of conducting business when a property is analyzed the ratios make us understand various problem areas and bright spots of the business the problem areas help management to make the situation better in the future and take care of such things there are many advantages of ratio analysis helps to understand the efficacy of decisions the ratio analysis tells whether the organization has taken the right kind of financial operational and investing decisions and help them to improve simplify complex figures and establish relationships ratio analysis simplifies complex accounting figures and summarizes the financial information effectively it helps to assess firm's earning capacity managerial efficiency and creditworthiness helpful in comparative analysis the ratio is not calculated for one year but they help to explore the trends in year by year these trends help to make projections about the business in the future identification of problem ratio analysis help in finding out problem areas as well as bright areas of the business so that the problem areas can be improved and better areas can be more polished enabled swot analysis ratio tells about the changes in the business so that management can do strength and weakness analysis of their business to find the threats and opportunities of the business various comparisons ratio analysis helps to set benchmarks for the business and later to assess the business performance whether it is better or not the solvency profitability of the business is compared over the years within the organizational targets with other organizations and with standards that are set for the organization limitations of ratio analysis limitations of ratio analysis that arise from financial statements as the ratios are calculated from the financial statements so any issue in the financial statement will also creep in the derived analysis there are certain limitations of the ratio analysis limitations of accounting data accounting data reflect a recorded fact 
accounting conventions and personal judgments all combined together. For example, profit of the business is not a precise and final figure. It is just an opinion of the accountant after applying accounting policies. So, the financial statements may not reveal the true state of affairs of the enterprises. And so, the ratios will also not give the true picture. Ignore price level changes. The financial accounting applies stable money measurement principle. It assumes that price level changes are either non existent or minimal. But the truth is that we are living in an inflated economy where the value of money declines constantly. A change in the price level makes an analysis of the financial statement of different accounting years meaningless because accounting records do not take into consideration changes in the value of money. Ignore qualitative or non-monetary aspects. Accounting covers only monetary aspects of business. Hence, the ratios also reflect only the monetary aspects, ignoring completely the non-monetary factors. Variation in accounting practices. We follow different accounting policies for the valuation of inventory, calculating depreciation, etc. These variations leave a big question on the cross-sectional analysis. As there are variations in accounting practices in different business enterprises, a valid comparison of their financial statements is not possible. Forecasting Forecasting of future trends on the basis of historical analysis is not feasible. Proper forecasting requires consideration of non-financial factors as well. Limitations of ratios Now let's know some limitations of ratios. There are many limitations of ratios. Means and not the end. Ratios are means to reach an end, not an end itself. Lack of ability to resolve problems. The ratios are indicative and do not provide a solution for the problems. Lack of standardized definitions. There is a lack of standardized definitions of concepts used in ratio analysis. For example, there is no standard definition of liquid liabilities, lack of universally accepted standard levels. There is no universal standard which tells the level of ideal ratios. Universally acceptable and in India, the industry averages are also not available. Ratios based on unrelated figures. A ratio calculated for unrelated figures would be a meaningless effort. Types of ratios The ratios can be classified as traditional classification and functional classification. On the basis of traditional classification, the ratios can be classified as statement of profit and loss ratios. When we take a ratio of two variables from the statement of profit and loss is known as the statement of profit and loss ratio. For example, the ratio of gross profit to revenue from operations is known as gross profit ratio. Balance sheet ratios. When both the variables are from the balance sheet, then they are called balance sheet ratios. For example, ratios of current assets to current liabilities known as current ratio. Composite ratio. It is a combination of two ratios from different statements. Like, one variable from the statement of profit and loss and another variable from the balance sheet. It is called comp Types of Ratios Functional Classification of Ratios The functional classification is based on the purpose for which the ratio is calculated. Liquidity Ratio we know that the business needs liquid funds, the ability of business to pay the amount which is due to investors is known as liquidity and the ratios that measure liquidity is known as liquidity ratios. These are short term in nature. Solvency ratios A business's ability to meet its contractual obligations towards external stakeholders is known as solvency and the ratio calculated to measure solvency position are called as solvency ratios. Turnover ratios 
The ratios that are calculated for measuring the efficiency of the business operations on the basis of effective utilization of resources. Profitability ratios It refers to the analysis of profit with reference to revenue from operations of funds employed in the business and the ratios calculated to meet this objective are known as profitability ratios. Liquidity ratios These ratios are calculated to measure the short-term solvency of the business, whether the firm is able to meet its current obligations or not. These are calculated on the basis of amount of current assets and current liabilities in the business. It consists of two ratios, A. Current ratio and B. Quick ratio. Current ratio and quick ratio. Current ratio. It is the ratio of current assets to current liabilities. It is written as Current assets include current investments, inventories, trade receivables, prepaid expenses, advanced tax, and accrued income, etc. Current liabilities include short term borrowings, creditors and bill payables other current liabilities and short-term provisions. Significance of current ratio The current ratio should be reasonable. It should neither be very high or very low. A very high current ratio implies heavy investment in current assets and it reflects underutilization or improper utilization of resources. A low ratio endangers the business and puts it at risk of facing a situation where it will not be able to pay its short-term debt on time. Quick Ratio It is the ratio of quick assets to current liabilities. The assets that can be quickly converted into cash are called as quick assets. While calculating quick assets, we exclude the prepaid expenses, inventories at the end, etc. It is calculated to give a check on the liquidity position of the business and is therefore also known as acid test ratio. Significance of quick ratio The ratio provides a way to measure the capacity of the business to meet its short-term obligations without any flaw. Solvency ratios the person who lends money to the business expects timely payment of his interest and repayment of the amount of principal at the end of the loan period. Solvency ratios are calculated to find out the ability of the business to service its debt in the long run. The following solvency ratios are calculated to find out the solvency of the business. Types of Solvency Ratios Solvency ratios can be divided into the following categories. Debt equity ratio. This ratio measures the relationship between long term debt and equity. For security, capital structure with less debt and more equity is considered favorable as it reduces the chances of bankruptcy. It is calculated as long term debts upon shareholders' funds. Significance of Debt Equity Ratio This ratio measures indebtedness of an enterprise and tells the long-term lender regarding the extent of security of the debt. As discussed earlier, a low debt equity ratio reflects more security. A high ratio, on the other hand, is considered risky. However, from the perspective of owners, greater use of debt ensures greater returns for them. If the rate of earnings on capital employed is higher than the rate of interest payable. Debt Ratio The debt ratio refers to the ratio of long-term debt to the total of external and internal funds. It is computed as follows. Long-term debts upon capital employed. 
significance of debt to capital employed ratio debt equity ratio shows the ratio of long term debts in the capital employed low ratio means lenders are secure and high ratio helps management in trading on equity the debt ratio can also be computed in with regard to total assets in that case it usually refers to the ratio of total debts proprietary ratios proprietary ratio depicts the relationship of shareholders funds to net assets the formula to calculate the proprietary ratio is significance of proprietary ratios higher the ratio of shareholders funds in financing the assets the more security it will provide to the creditors total assets to debt ratio this ratio calculates the extent of the coverage of long term debts by assets the higher total assets to debt ratio means that assets have been financed by owners funds and the long term loan is adequately covered by assets significance of total assets to debt ratio this ratio mainly indicates the rate of external funds in financing the assets and the extent of coverage of their debts are covered by assets interest coverage ratio this ratio deals with the servicing of interest on loan it is a way to measure the security of interest payable on long term debts it expresses the relationship between profits available for payment of interest and the amount of interest payable significance of interest coverage ratio it tells the numbers of times interest on long term debts is covered by the profits available for interest a higher ratio ensures safety of interest on debts activity or turnover ratio these ratios tell the speed of activities of the business these ratio expresses the number of times the assets are employed and if any assets are turned into sales during the accounting period higher turnover ratio depicts better utilization of assets and signifies improved efficiency and profitability and as such are known as efficiency ratios types of activity ratios the important activity ratios are as follows inventory turnover ratio this ratio calculates the number of times out of operations inventory is converted into revenue during an accounting period it tells the relationship between the cost of revenue from operations and average inventory significance of inventory turnover ratio it is used to measure the liquidity how many times the inventory is purchased and replaced during the year low turnover of inventory can be because of bad buying obsolete inventory etc and high turnover is good and it may be because of buying in small lots or selling quickly at low margin to realize cash trade receivables turnover ratio the ratio that tells the relationship between credit revenue from operations and trade receivables is called as trade receivables turnover ratio significance of trade receivables turnover ratio the speed at which the trade receivables are realized determines the liquidity position of the company it tells the number of times the receivables are turned over and converted into cash in an accounting period higher turnover means speedy collection from trade receivables trade payable turnover ratio trade payable turnover ratio tells the pattern of payment of trade payable a trade payable is created out of credit purchases and it expresses relationship between credit purchases and trade payable significance of trade payable turnover ratio it tells the average payment period lower ratio means credit allowed by the supplier is for a long period or delayed payment to suppliers which may affect the reputation of the business types of activity ratios net assets or capital employed turnover ratio it reflects relationship between revenue from operations 
and capital employed in the business. Higher turnover means better activity and profitability. Significance of net assets turnover ratio High turnover of capital employed, working capital and fixed assets is a good sign and implies efficient utilization of resources. Higher turnover reflects efficient utilization resulting in higher liquidity and profitability in the business. Profitability Ratio Profitability ratio helps to know the earning capacity of the business by utilizing the resources of the business. There is a relationship between the profit and the efficiency with resources are utilized in the business. Types of Profitability Ratio There are various types of profitability ratio. Let us discuss them one by one. Gross Profit Ratio Gross Profit Ratio is a percentage of operations and revenues which is also known as Gross Margin. Significance of Gross Profit Ratio It indicates gross margin on selling of products. It also indicates the margin available to cover operating expenses, non-operating expenses, etc. Change in gross profit ratio happens due to change in selling price or cost of revenue from operations or a combination of both. Operating Ratio It is calculated to find out cost of operation with respect to revenue from operations. Operating Profit Ratio This ratio helps to calculate operating margin. Significance of Operating Profit Ratio this ratio helps to analyze the performance of the business and reflects the operational efficiency of the business. It is useful for inter-firm and intra-firm comparisons. Net Profit Ratio This ratio shows a relation of revenue from operation to net profit after deducting all the operational as well as non-operational expenses and incomes. Significance of Net Profit Ratio It tells about the profitability of the business and used in computation of return on investment. It also tells about the overall efficiency of the business, return on capital employed or investment. This ratio tells about the overall utilization of the funds by the organization. Capital employed means long-term funds employed in the business like shareholders funds, debentures and long-term loans. Capital employed may be considered as total of non-current assets and working capital of the business. Significance of Return on Capital Employed Ratio It measures return on capital employed in the business. It tells about the efficiency of the business in utilization of funds invested by shareholders debenture holders and long-term loans. It also helps in inter-firm comparison. Return on shareholders' funds. This ratio is very important from shareholders' point of view as they want to know whether their investment in the firm generates a reasonable return or not. The return should be higher than the return on investment. Otherwise, it would reflect that the company's funds have not been employed profitably. Earning per share The earning per share refers to the amount of profit that is available to the equity shareholders. It is important to calculate earnings per share as it is important for the equity shareholders to know and also in stock market to know the price of the share. The profit that is considered for the EPS is the profit calculated after deducting the dividend on preference shares. This ratio is important to do the comparisons and also the ability of business to pay dividends. Book value per share. This ratio is again important for equity shareholders as it reveals about the value of holdings of equity shareholders and the effect of market price on shares. Equity shareholders fund are calculated after deducting preference share capital from shareholders' funds. Dividend Payout Ratio 
This ratio calculates the share of earnings that are distributed to the shareholders. This ratio tells about the company's dividend policy and the growth in owner's equity. Price Earnings Ratio This ratio reflects whether the growth of firm's earnings and reasonableness of market price of the shares is as per investors' expectation or not. The ratio may vary from company to company or industry to industry. In same industry, depends upon the perception of investors of their future. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned in this module. A ratio is a mathematical number that helps to calculate the relationship of two or more numbers. Ratio analysis provides important financial information to the users and also tells areas that need investigations. Ratios makes us understand various problem areas and bright spots of the business. The ratio analysis tells whether the organization has taken the right kind of financial, operation and investing decisions and helps them to improve. Ratio analysis simplifies complex accounting figures and summarizes the financial information effectively. Accounting data reflect a recorded fact. Accounting conventions and personal judgments all combined together. The ability of the business to pay the amount which is due to investors is known as liquidity and the ratios that measures liquidity is known as liquidity ratios. A business's ability to meet its contractual obligations towards external stakeholders is known as solvency and the ratio calculated to measure solvency position are called as solvency ratios. The ratios that are calculated for measuring the efficiency of the business operations on the basis of effective utilization of resources is called efficiency ratio. Solvency ratios are calculated to measure the short-term solvency of the business, whether the firm is able to meet its current obligations or not. The assets that can be quickly converted into cash are called as quick assets. Solvency ratios are calculated to find out the ability of the business to service its debt in the long run. Proprietary ratio depicts the relationship of shareholders' funds to net assets. The ratio that tells the relationship between credit revenue from operations and trade receivables is called the trade receivables turnover ratio. Trade payables turnover ratio tells the pattern of payment of trade payables. Profitability ratio helps to know the earning capacity of the business by utilizing the resources of the business. Gross profit ratio is a percentage of operations and revenues, which is also known as gross margin.